For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Over 1,000 deaths, as many as 33 million impacted. Large parts of the country inundated and the looming threat of hunger and disease. The scale of the calamity facing the government and the people of Pakistan is almost unprecedented. In terms of flood-related disasters, this is the worst in more than a decade. And the damage is only escalating. As reports start coming in from various official sources and NGOs, the massive proportions of the tragedy are becoming more and more clear. In this video, we take a look at what's happened in Pakistan over the past couple of months, the government's response, how the impact of climate change is exacerbating the situation and what lies ahead for a country already grappling with political and economic crisis. The earliest reports of flooding started coming in in June of this year. Areas of Baluchistan, Sindh and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, three of the country's four provinces were hit hard. Before the rain hit, Pakistan had experienced back-to-back -back heat waves in May and June, making it one of the hottest countries in the world with the highest record temperature of 53 degrees Celsius. Where the scientists say the conditions created by the heat waves resulted in a strong thermal low that brought much more rain than usual. The heat waves also triggered forest fires and three times as many glacial lake outburst floods as normal. Officials have compared the floods to 2010, the worst on record, when more than 2,000 people died and nearly a fifth of the country was underwater. The frightening difference this time round is that almost the entire country is inundated and more rain and floods are forecast for the coming weeks. A leading Pakistan daily, Dawn, put things into perspective with regard to Pakistan bearing a disproportionate cost of global carbon emissions. This is what they had to say. Though Pakistan is responsible for only a small fraction of a single percentage point when it comes to historical global carbon dioxide emission, it is among the countries most vulnerable to climate change brought by pollution. Given the reams of scientific evidence on the subject, it is not wrong to expect rich developed nations which generate the bulk of the pollutants that have triggered climate change to take greater responsibility. It is perhaps too early to arrive at an authoritative account of the extent of damage, but Climate Change Minister Sherry Rahman called this the monster monsoon and said the situation is a serious climate catastrophe, one of the hardest in the decade. Officials estimate more than 33 million people impacted, that's one in every seven Pakistanis, including destruction or serious damage to a million homes. Data released by the National Disaster Management Authority, or the NDMA, tells us 1,600 people were injured and more than 719,000 livestock dead. Over 3,400 kilometers of roads, 149 bridges, 170 shops, nearly 950,000 houses have already been counted in various stages of damage. As we know from the history of natural disasters, these kinds of waters bring with them the conditions of mass outbreaks of waterborne diseases. Recent outbreaks of cholera, diarrhea, skin infections, malaria and other infections in the country have wreaked havoc, with thousands, including children, battling for their lives in hospitals, ill-equipped to deal with the sheer numbers. The Sindh Health Department confirmed in a statement that around 52,000 suffering from just diarrhea alone have been recorded from flood-affected areas of that province alone. Incidents of mosquito-borne diseases, as well as related issues like snake bites, are on the up. The prognosis doesn't look good. We have with us Taimur Rahman, the General Secretary of the Mazdoor Kisan Party from Pakistan, to speak on the issue. It has been reported, BBC has stated, that the floods are on a good biblical scale. What that means is that approximately 33 million people have been affected by the floods. Over 1,000 people have already perished. Um, you could say that maybe 50% to 60% of Pakistan is inundated with water. Nearly all of Balochistan, all of Sindh, and big parts of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and southern Punjab are under water. People's lives have been swept away. Their homes have been destroyed. Their cattle and other um, animals, etc., have been lost. 
obviously the crops have been destroyed. And these are only the early days of the flood. What that means is that the devastation brought by the floods is going to be followed, sadly and unfortunately, by many different kinds of waterborne diseases and problems that come with inundation of an entire region. Children are in a desperate state. There is no food, there is no clothing. It is a catastrophe of, on a magnitude that we have not seen in a decade. Pakistan Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah confirmed the deployment of the armed forces in rescue operations, but also noted the challenges to these operations. Critical infrastructure, including transport and communication, is nowhere near optimal levels and very few landing strips are in good enough condition to supply or evacuate cut-off areas. Pakistan and the United Nations have appealed for international assistance to deal with the multidimensional problems the floods have led up to. China, the US, UK, UAE and others have contributed to a disaster appeal, but there is a clear need for both more resources as well as better allocation of relief materials as and when they do come in. Dawn has also reported Prime Minister Sharif's announcement of a grant of $45 million for KPK, the worst hit province, amounting to a little over $100 a family. But there is little word on the other regions. It is also worth questioning how exactly the government plans to disperse these funds within its own one-week promise, given the state of connectivity and communication. And while the government has taken the route of putting out all the blame for the disaster on climate change, poor local government planning has done little to ease the suffering of the people. Pakistan was already experiencing a severe economic crisis with weekly inflation being at approximately 40%. We're already under debt and so on, trying very hard to pay back and we were experiencing stagflation. There was no growth, and there was almost, all, enormous inflation. In fact, people were saying that we were going, going to get into a Sri Lankan-like crisis. But uh, instead, we've had this horrific calamity. And uh, it has to also be said that when we experienced these floods in 2010, at that time there was, and there is even today, enormous outrage about uh, the fact that the government had not done anything to ensure that water can be, when there's an overflow of water, that it can be controlled. That sadly continues to be case, the case, despite the fact that 12 years have elapsed from that 2010 flood. Uh, no measures were taken in the last decade, 12 years, to uh, control water when it was, uh, you know, in, in, in such a situation. And we can see the results of that, Pakistan today.